Okay, now we're in chapter three, and we're going to talk about option basics. And uh, we're going to cover only the material that you need to know to implement option strategies. We don't have to get into complicated uh, mathematical formulas. Uh, okay, an option is also sometimes uh, termed a derivative because its value is based on an underlying uh, asset. And the value of the option is going to fluctuate with the price of the underlying asset. Uh, there are several things that can influence uh, option prices, interest rates, dividends, stock splits. And when you buy a call, uh, a call option, uh, that gives you the right to buy the underlying stock uh, at a certain price before option expiration date. So a call option, it gives you the right to buy an underlying stock. And buying a put option, that gives you the right to sell a stock uh, before the expiration date of the put option. Uh, the person who buys an option is referred to as the buyer. Uh, and they're charged or debited to their account with the price of the option. Uh, the price, uh, person who sells the option is the seller or the writer. And uh, the, the seller or writer uh, will receive a credit in his account, cash credit, whenever he sells an option. So if he sells uh, Cisco Systems 50 call option at $5, he'll receive $500 will go into his account. Uh, if you're the option seller. If you're the option buyer, then your account will be debited for $500. And all option contracts are standardized uh, and they uh, are cleared through the uh, Options Clearing Corporation. Uh, at expiration, the uh, purchaser, the owner of the option, no longer has a right to buy or sell the securities once the option expires. And the cost of the option is referred to as the premium. <clears throat> and the premium of, e of any option uh, consists of time value and intrinsic value. Uh, the time value uh, will be based on certain uh, factors like uh, the time to expiration and the volatility of the, of the market. Uh, the intrinsic value is the value of the option based on the underlying security, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. <coughs> now, when you buy an option, uh, you must be approved in your brokerage account you know, to buy options. Uh, most accounts, including uh, IRA accounts will allow you to buy options. Uh, and once, if you, if you buy an option, your risk is limited to the premium that you paid for the option. Uh, so you have to have enough cash in your account to pay for that premium. <coughs> now, if you sell an option, you have to, be, you have, to have account approval uh, from your broker to sell, to sell an option. Uh, and that usually requires a margin contract unless you're writing a covered call. And that covered call trade doesn't require margin. You can do that in an IRA or retirement account. And when you sell an option, your, your risk is unlimited. Uh, and you must have margin in your account to cover that risk. Most of, this, most of the strategies we'll, we'll be discussing today from the Guaranteed Real Income Program involve selling options as opposed to buying options. <coughs> now, the underlying, <coughs> the underlying security uh, can, be, it can be a stock, it can be an index. Uh, there's also options on futures. It could be pork belly, silver. So there's a lot of... Uh, underlying instruments that have options. And the option usually uses the same symbol uh, that the stock trades at if it's a stock. Okay, the strike price, that's the price at which the option holder or buyer uh, will buy the stock. If you buy the, the General Electric 
December 110 call, you have the right as the buyer of the option to buy 100 shares of GE at 110 before the expiration. And the expiration date, uh, the, the option contract becomes void. And the expiration is normally the third Friday of, of every month. Um, and short options, if you're short an option going into expiration, if it's in the money, then you will, you will be assigned automatically. And of course, as we said before, there's two types of options, call options and put options. If you buy a, a call option, you benefit if the price of the stock moves higher. If you buy a put option, you benefit if the price of the stock moves lower. When you buy a call option, purchase a call option, uh, you're expecting the price of the stock to go up. It's a bullish strategy. Uh, and when you buy a call option, of course, the risk is limited to the premium that you pay. Uh, the profit potential, however, is unlimited. And as long as the stock keeps moving up in price, your profit's going to increase. Uh, and again, uh, you can, you can uh, ob obtain leverage with a call option because if you buy a stock, a $50 stock, and pay $2 for the call option, if that stock goes up 10 points, you're going to realize a big return on your money. So that gives you leverage without having to use margin. And for buying uh, call options, you'd want, you'd want uh, to use your analysis uh, on the stock. Uh, you use the fundamental analysis that we discussed, the technical and the seasonal. And once you found a good candidate for a, call, for a, for a bullish position, then you'd, you'd want to buy a call option on it. And you can choose from in the money, at the money, or out of the money. And here's an example of buying a call option and the truncated risk or limited risk. Uh, this, this example is uh, buying an Intel August 60 strike call. Uh, and the price for this is uh, two and a half points or $250. So if you buy the 60 strike and you pay two and a half points, your break even is going to be around 62 and a half. So once you buy that option, once Intel moves above 62 and a half, then you start realizing profits. Uh, if Intel goes down, then the most you can lose is $250. And there's a price graph of your limited risk. OK, and again, uh, stock options versus stock ownership. Options have a limited life. When you purchase an option, uh, the expected move has to occur before expiration. Whereas with stocks, you can just hold those indefinitely. So when you buy an option, uh, you, you, you must be correct about the direction and the time of the underlying asset.